welcome my name is Natalia this is crafting with Natalia and today I have a fluster video for you thank you so much if you're coming back to my channel um, I love always you know hearing from my subscribers and people who come back to my videos I feel like you're you're my friends that come over for, for a cuppa and, and uh, a little chat about cross stitch um, and thank you also so much if you're new here, if you've recently joined my channel or if maybe you've just stumbled upon this video and it's your first video that you're watching from me. Thank you so much for visiting and I hope that you like it here. I hope that you find something interesting and that, um, I don't know, <laughs> you enjoy seeing my stitchy projects and that you come back in the future as well. Uh, so yes, welcome everybody. Um, this is my end of February video, so I'm trying this year to be good and I'm trying to post these monthly updates where I kind of summarize everything that happened over the, the past month or the, all the projects I've stitched on and all the whips, all the new starts and the finishes. Uh, so my sum up for February <laughs> is kind of bittersweet because uh, I think I've achieved some things and then the month, it was a short month, although longer, you know, because it was a leap year, but still I ran out of time to do a lot of the things I wanted to do. So that kind of made me reflect on uh, what I want to do moving forward. And yeah, there's kind of a bit of, um, ref I don't know, I'm in this kind of reflective mood um, lately. And to be honest, I don't know, this week has been a bit difficult for me mentally. I don't know. I've if you've been on my channel before, I'm sure you know that I struggle a bit with my mental health and sometimes my anxiety gets better off me. And, um, and you know, I've, I've had some family troubles over the past few months and um, th that's still ongoing and that's still playing on my mind quite a bit. And I just, I just find life a little bit difficult lately. But I have lovely stitchy friends, you guys, <laughs> to cheer me up and to, to keep me company in, in those difficult more difficult times as well and I've been really really blessed so um February has been my birthday month uh, so my birthday is just the day after Valentine's and um, I've received some lovely stitchy kindness some of it was birthday related some of it was just just happened to be in the month of February uh, but it felt like extended birthday as well uh, so I thought actually I may start by sharing some of the stitchy kindness I got uh, over the past month because that's actually I think something that was the most valuable for me this month like obviously I enjoy um, stitching on, on all my projects and I, I enjoy my crafting but you know there's something really really special about coming home to a parcel or or even you know there was one day when I wasn't feeling well and I was uh, actually at home and then a parcel slipped through the letterbox and I was like, what is it? <laughs> like, I wasn't expecting anything in the mail and it turned out to be a wonderful gift uh, from a stitchy friend. Um, and these surprises, they really make my day, they make my week and they are something that actually keeps me going. When I feel a bit rough, like I do feel a bit rough today even, when I think of, you know, of these lovely gifts I received, um, they really cheer me up and they really bring a smile on my face so thank you so much um for for those of you who sent me had sent me gifts i really really appreciate it honestly it makes my day every time so what i got this month i mean i i don't think i have everything so first of all i got a i got two birthday gifts one <laughs> one was um a wonderful surprise from my uh stitchy friend tina uh, and so I've mentioned Tina on my channel before. Uh, so she actually made me something. Uh, let me try if I, if I can put them on. <laughs> so uh, she actually made me something. Um, so we went with my husband for a trip to Paris uh, for my birthday. And so she made me actually a pair of gloves. She stitched me a pair of gloves um, to take for, for the trip with me. But actually, it was pretty warm in Paris, so I didn't really need them in Paris. But then I wore them here last weekend, and I think I may need them this weekend too, because it's pretty cold this weekend in London. Uh, so anyway, I'm just trying to fold them properly. But she made me <laughs> these lovely fingerless uh, gloves. Um, so I think that's wonderful. Um, they're very, very warm and cozy. Um, 
and yeah uh thank you so much tina i am really really happy with this gift i've been wearing them already and even you know i took them even to my office because my office gets cold sometimes and um especially my right hand so i i don't know if i would like some arthritis or something but it gets really cold and and uh sore sometimes so i've actually put the glove on and, and i could still type uh, on the keyboard of these gloves so that was really great so thank you so much tina and then I got another gift from Edita, uh, my my um, Polish Stygi friend who also lives in the UK. Uh, so actually, she sent me, uh, she made me also, I get all these handmade gifts, they're wonderful. Uh, she made me this uh, project bag, which is this one. Uh, you can see it's quite stuffed because I actually put some yarn in there. <laughs> I've got a little secret project, a crochet project, and that's not been progressing very well. But anyway, <laughs> it's green, so I thought it would fit in this bag really well. Uh, so I've put some yarn in there. I'm not going to show you for now because it is a secret. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a lovely bag and there was some goodies, uh, some lovely needles and um, what else? Oh, there was this um, like a rabbit bunny, bunny thing. I, I think I have it in my other project. I can show you. There was like a bunny, oh, bunny tag, e, bunny tag, and I forgot what else there was. Uh, there was a lovely card, a bunny card. <laughs> but yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful gift I got from Edita. Um, yeah, and then I got a couple. Oh, I know what I need to show you as well. Give me a second, guys. I have to. Uh, I have to get it. Okay, so here's the card I got from Edita. And that was my birthday card with the lovely bunny. Uh, it made me think of spring. <laughs> and then I got a lovely, lovely card in the mail just yesterday. And that was this lovely turtle card uh, from Tamara. Uh, so Tamara is also my longtime subscriber. And she sent me not just this lovely card, which is beautiful by itself. Actually, I love the card. It's, it's, it's such a me card. <laughs> I love anything sea. I love sea colors. I love sea turtles. I, I love sea animals and all that uh, so this is a perfect gift already but it wasn't just the card she sent me she also sent me a lovely 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 needle minder look at this guys how beautiful is this needle minder it's so sparkly so it's beautiful dragon so in my last video i was talking about joining the dragon dragon year year of the dragon so <laughs> dragon year cell i don't know i think it's the year of the dragon cell uh, and you know i i was talking about stitching on dragon projects um this year because it's it's the the lunar year of the dragon and um and then i got this in the mail this perfect needle minder for the year of the dragon and it's so blue and sparkly so beautiful just gorgeous so thank you so much tamara for this beautiful gift and then I got another surprise gift. Uh, so that one, I mean, it was it wasn't like a full surprise because I kind of knew it was going to come at some point, but I really wasn't expecting it on that day when it came. Um, and so I mentioned in my last video the Stitching Owl. So the Stitching Owl is a lovely floss tube channel. I will link that channel below in the description. Uh, so the Stitching Owl is... Um, is a channel run by a lovely lady called Karen and Karen uh, she is so wonderful <laughs> uh, she is so sweet and um, you know when I don't know her floss tubes really calm me down and really I don't, and there's she 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 has lots of like interesting facts and uh, she plays music at the end of her videos and it's a very very I don't know it's a very nice channel i definitely recommend the channel but also karen she stitches a lot of little a lot of little ornaments so she has lots of uh, finishes and um lots of interesting finishes like you know maybe ornaments that i wouldn't have seen before and uh, she also she's so lovely that she decided to do this thing where she sends uh, what she calls she sends a smile to one of uh, her subscribers or you know if somebody somebody that she knows 
so you can actually go on her channel and you can drop her an email and you can request for her to send you a smile uh and i i mean i <laughs> i'm i'm thinking you know if if she keeps advertising that uh then then she may get you know she may get too many requests and eventually she, she won't be able to keep up <laughs> with all these requests but for now i think it's not too bad like you know she she's managing to send all the smiles um so you can still request i think from her and that you would like her to send you a smile and that's what i did and so she sent me um, this lovely ornament uh, that she finished. Um, it's this uh, little motif that's stitched in red floss, like a red thread, uh, with beads, white beads. And then it's got the, it's finished with beads around the edges. I don't know if you can see. And then it's got this lovely charm as well, 2024. And it's finished with some red fabric at the back. So that's the ornament I got from Karen and that came along with this lovely card as well. Uh, so that's another wonderful gift. Um, I've really been very blessed um, in the past month with all the gifts from all the wonderful people. Um, yeah, so, so that's been wonderful. And that's not the very end of it yet because that's the thing I remembered. Back in December, I won a giveaway uh, from Crafty Kate. So Crafty Kate, she also has a channel here on YouTube. Um, I will link both her channel below as well as her, um, uh, she's got a shop uh, because she's actually a fabric dyer. And so she dyes beautiful, beautiful fabrics. Um, I've actually never had a fabric from her. Uh, but back in December, I entered the giveaway on Instagram. And um, basically I was very, very lucky to win a fabric. And... Um, it was any fabric that you choose so you could just um, choose full quarter of, of any of the fabrics that she she has on offer and um, and I chose a fabric in the colorway Jade and I went for I actually went for linen because I wanted it to be nice and bright in terms of the color uh, so I went for 32 count 32 count opalescent of course uh, linen in the color Jade so let me show you this <laughs> now guys this is gorgeous so Kate very kindly sent me this fabric um, as the giveaway price um, and poor thing um, her first package got lost in the mail so I never received it and then she messaged me on Instagram, oh, how's your fabric? Because I obviously haven't, <laughs> I, I didn't know if that she sent it already. And I was like, oh no, I haven't received anything. And so she actually offered to dye me another one, uh, which is so very kind of her because, um, you know, she was doing it completely for free. So I was actually feeling really bad. And I was like, you don't have to send me anything. <laughs> but she still sent me another one. And this one, fortunately, I was so worried because they like she she messaged me said oh i sent it now and then a week has passed and i'm like I, I haven't received it and i was thinking i'm gonna have to lie i'm gonna have to say i received it so she doesn't do it the third time but fortunately this time the fabric has arrived and it's gorgeous it's beautiful and now i have to figure out what to stitch on it i mean i have some ideas but it's a very special fabric it's it's beautiful it's so sparkly um it is such a beautiful bright color it's like my favorite kind of color um so i'm also looking for ideas from you guys if you have an idea what would look good on this fabric um that i might enjoy stitching uh, then please drop me a suggestion in the comment box below um because i would love to hear your ideas um i'm very open to all sorts of suggestions um yeah and i'm just gonna for now i'm just gonna add this fabric to my stash and when the right moment comes i'm gonna definitely really enjoy stitching on it um yeah and she also sent me this lovely card as well uh, so thank you so much i'm not sure if kate is gonna watch this or not uh, but thank you kate for sending me this um you know for for going through all the effort of uh, dyeing it and sending it twice um yeah that's that's really amazing so thank you so much so I think that's all my stitchy kindness and all the kind of, you know, 
um, it's not really haul because I it's I didn't pay for any of this stuff. <laughs> but it's just to show you the, the lovely things that I received. And now I think what I'm going to do is the same thing as I did last month. So I'm going to do like a little presentation of um, the stats, like the stats of what I did over the month of February, just like um, a summary of what happened, what projects did I work on, how many stitches did I stitch, did I, how many, did I have any starts, did I have any finishes, and then I'm going to show you each project individually, and um, yeah, and I hope you enjoy. So I'm going to flip you over to my presentation, and I'll see you there. Okay, so let's let's have a look guys at what I managed to achieve in the month of February. So first of all my stats for February um, what's first? Okay so total day stitched. I stitched on every day of February so I stitched on all 29 days of February. So so far this year I've stitched every single day of the year. Yay! <laughs> This is editing me. <laughs> Something went wrong with my sound in this bit, so I'm just going to tell you roughly what I said. I said that the total number of stitches I stitched in February was 9,318, which is a little bit less than in January, uh, which is also to be expected as it was a shorter month and also January was an um, exceptionally good stitchy month for me. Uh, so I'm not really surprised I stitched a little bit less in February and I think this two days, having two days less in a month really makes a difference as well. Anyway, I'll put you back into my actual video now. <laughs> uh, I think 9,300, that's still pretty good. Um, total whips, that's wrong. <laughs> oh, okay, so total, so that was, I think I, that was meant to be a 10. <laughs> I'm not gonna, well, you know what, actually, I think I can correct it um, when I, later on when I edit the before I export the presentation I think I can actually edit this so it may be right when you see this this should say 10 let's see if it's going to be right when you see this uh, so I stitched on total of 10 whips and then I managed to finish one of them so one project is done yay but <laughs> I started the total of three new projects in the month of February the good news is that one of the new starts was also the finish. So technically, I only started two new projects because that, that one that I finished doesn't count, right? So so we're all good. Uh, so here you can see the breakdown of all the things I stitched on by when I stitched on them, when I started them and when I finished them. And so, so yeah, that's just to kind of give you an overview of how I worked on different projects in the month of February. And then here you can see how many stitches I did every day on the different projects that I was stitching on. And we have the average number of stitches per day of 321. Do you guys also have this that um, when you see numbers, then you see DMC colors sometimes? <laughs> like right now I'm seeing this lovely bright red color in front of my eyes because it's the number 321. I don't know. I think it's the stitchers. Stitcher's disease, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, so anyway, so this is how many stitches I did on the different projects on the different days. And if we want to like make a plot of how many stitches I stitched every day uh, total, uh, then you can see um, how it kind of, how, was, how it was distributed between different days. Um, finally, there doesn't seem to be a pattern, like for me, I don't seem to get any more stitching done over weekends than weekdays. Um, my most stitching day was the Valentine's Day, actually, when I was off work and I had a new start and I was really keen on this new start, so I got a lot of stitching done on it. Um, uh, but then we went to Paris for four days and then my, um, my well, for f we, we, went, we went on the 15th. And then we came on the 18th, really. So it's not quite, so my Paris actually was shifted by one day. So it was four days. Uh, I still managed to get quite a bit of stitching done on the on the 15th, because I guess uh, I had some stitching, in, stitching time in the morning before we left. And then also, um, no, actually, I think the most I got, I got done at home before we left. And then once we got to Paris, I didn't really manage to get much stitching done. 
there wasn't really much time and then the lighting in the hotel wasn't great either so actually I ended up reading a book instead um, so then I only got back to stitching properly once we returned to the UK um, but yeah there, there doesn't seem to be like a pattern to my stitching some days I get a lot done and some days I really don't so it depends on other things I do on a given day okay so moving on and uh, these are the projects I stitched on in January no, February. <laughs> I really need to edit these slides before I show them to you guys. So it should say February when you see this. <laughs> uh, so what do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, that's the right number. So hopefully everything is in there. <laughs> I feel like I haven't done a very good job with this presentation this month. Um, yes, so my most stitched on project is my start and finish, which was the Winter Bear by Nora Corbett. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen it. If you don't, then you will see it today when I show it to you later. Um, then the second station project is Love is Here Sampler, which I haven't shown anywhere yet. So this is the first chance for you guys to see it. Um, and that one I stitched se over 1700 stitches. So that's quite a lot of stitches I got done on this one. That's the one I was stitching on Valentine's Day. That was my Valentine's project. Then the next project that I stitched on a lot was Sea of Love, which was um, a whip I already had, but I hadn't actually stitched on it for a long time. So it's good that I finally managed to get some progress on it. It was also kind of a Valentine-y type of project. So I think that's why I was inspired to stitch on it so much um, this month. And then was my, um, my other new start. So, so the ones in white are my new starts. So my third new start was The Power of the Dragons. So, so you can see the trend that I do tend to stitch more on my new starts than my older projects. <laughs> so that doesn't seem to change that much. But then I did stitch quite a bit on The Sea of Love, so I'm redeemed a little bit, right? Um, in terms of finishes, I only had one, and that was actually my first finish for the year. So that was The Winter Bear by Nora Corbett. Okay. Uh, so now I can show you the projects one by one. So I will kind of give you a brief introduction here on the presentation and then I will switch over to my normal video where you can see the project close up with my camera. Okay, so my new starts for February. Uh, so I already mentioned that there was three of them. So you can see them listed here. See how many stitches I've done on each of them. And now we're going to go through them individually. So the first new start was The Power of the Dragon. So this is a chart designed by Susan Bates. Uh, however, I found it in the Cross Stitcher magazine issue 391. Uh, so that was an issue from January 2023. Um, although I'm not quite sure how these things work because I quite remember, um, I remember quite well getting an email about it towards the end of the year. And then I ordered that issue from that email. So I don't quite know. <clears throat> Sorry, how that was a January issue. But anyway, it was apparently a January 2023 issue. Um, and that's uh, so I couldn't find a picture of it online. So this is uh, a picture that I took myself just before I started it. As uh, so you can see what the dragon looks like on there. And now, um, oh yeah, so now you can see also some details about this project. Sorry, my, my brain is so scattered today. Um, but yes, yeah, so this project is stitched on a fabric from Picture This Plus. It's a 28 count linen uh, in crystal wren. So crystal means it's opalescent. It says lovely and sparkly. I think you can even see it on this picture here that there's a bit of sparkle on that fabric. And I'm just stitching it in uh, DMCs to, and, and there is, a little bit of cranic in there as well, and it's stitched two over two, with exception of cranic being one over two. And I'm stitching this project for the Year of the Dragon Sal. And this is not my only dragon that I'll be I'll be stitching this year, but this is the first one uh, that I picked since the Year of the Dragon has started on the 10th of February. Uh, so I actually started this project on the day, on the first day of the new lunar year, the Year of the Dragon. And so the Year of the Dragon Sal is organized um, by uh, Samantha from um, the Hygge Stitcher and um, also uh, by Erica from Fabrics, no, Floss, Fibers and Floss Canada. I think, I don't know, I will link both, both of their channels below as well. And they're both lovely floss tubers, uh, lovely stitchers, and they've got lots of beautiful projects. 
and so you should definitely go and check them out. I will definitely have more projects um, to start for the Year of the Dragon style, um, but yeah, as I said, this is my first one that I picked in February. So I was actually thinking about stitching, well, I mean, uh, Lizzie, um, uh, Lizzie from, uh, from from the channel, I never remember, uh, Mrs. Fisher Stitches, so um, Lizzie, Lizzie Fisher Stitches, I'm so sorry, Lizzie, I honestly, I can never remember what's your channel name, but I will link Lizzie's channel as well below, <laughs> you will learn the name sooner than I will. Uh, but Lizzie was mentioning in her last video and uh, that uh, there's seven different types of dragons um, according to the book and the fourth wing, which I started reading now, um, but I haven't gotten very far yet. Um, but so there's seven types of dragons. So she was talking about stitching seven different dragons in the year of the dragon. Uh, so I'm kind of thinking maybe, you know, I, I, I could definitely go up to seven. I already have so many project ideas that, you know, I could make it seven. So, so I may try and aim for that. But for now, I have this one. And then I also have my Easter dragon that I may try to pick up in March. So that may be two. And then I may start another one in March. Uh, we will see. <laughs> we'll have to wait till the end of next month. And, and then I'll tell you if I started one or not. <laughs> Maybe I'll start more than one. Who knows? Uh, anyway, I managed to stitch 809 stitches on this specific dragon, and this is how far I got. Um, actually, maybe the picture is, is easier in this case than showing you on the video. You will see why in a minute. Um, <laughs> uh, but this is anyway, it's, it's not looking very impressive so far. Um, but you can see I'm just stitching like I started in the middle uh, in that yellow bit, and I'm going up to the head. And then once I stitch the head, then I'm going to come down and do the rest of him, basically. So that's the plan. OK, I'm going to show you now with my front camera of my phone how it looks like. Um, I'm not sure if the video is going to be very good. <laughs> but anyway, you guys enjoy. <laughs> OK, so here's my dragon start. It's a little bit hard to show in this light. I'm not sure. It's a bit bright. Let me try this. Um, so this is how far I got. It doesn't look like anything right now. <laughs> it looks um, really just like a blob of red and yellow. This is where, so this is where his head is going to be. So I think that's what I'm going to do next. Um, because I always find with, um, with cross stitch projects, they really come to life when you stitch a head. <laughs> When you have like a face looking at you, you know, you have eyes and, and stuff, uh, then it starts looking like something else, like something. And then, um, yeah, it's much nicer to stitch. Uh, so I think I'm going to do the head next and then I'm going to come back. So there's also, there's a hand, hand, do dragons have hands? <laughs> I don't know, um, the paw, <laughs> paw. Um, so there's like a blue paw here and then I was missing some green. So I, I have to fill in some green here as well. And then there's obviously the long body. Um, so yeah, so not a lot to show just yet. So this fabric, it's a lot of sun out of the sudden. It's a weird weather today. It's kind of like, um, it was very bad in the morning, very rainy and windy, and now it's sunny, but it looks like it may rain again. I don't know. It's confusing, uh, but at least you can see the sparkle maybe in the sun. I don't know. <laughs> I can't actually see what you can see guys. No, the sun is confusing me. Um, but yeah, it's quite a sparkly fabric. So it's a linen, it's an opalescent linen, um, from picture this plus uh, so i ordered it from one two three stitch and um, it's in color ren w-r-e-n um yeah and it's a linen so it's a bit unusual for me because i normally stitch on even weave and i'm not i'm not such a big fan of stitching on linen but sometimes sometimes i do um and yes so this one is linen uh, and I don't really know what else to say. Uh, so that's really it, I think, for the dragon. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, and I've got a dragon needle minder from uh, Denkai Designs. Sorry about the sun, guys. I may need to put my blind down. Uh, because, yeah, it's really making my life difficult right now. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the next project. Okay, so my second start for the month was the Love is Here sampler. So that's a chart I actually found by accident. 
and these accidental findings are sometimes the best ones I find. Uh, so this one, I was actually looking for something completely different. And then I went onto this shop's website and I'm like, oh, I love this. And uh, this is really, really cute. And actually, I do love the original colors of it, but I kind of went um, in a completely different direction and I ended up changing the colors completely. Um, so I don't know if you're going to like mine. I actually, now that I look at the original, I thought maybe I shouldn't, shouldn't have changed them, but it's too late now. <laughs> I'm going to stitch my version and see what it looks like. If it doesn't look so good, then I'll have to stitch it in the original again. <laughs> we will see. But anyway, it's a lovely chart by... Um, a shop on Etsy called Studio HMP. I believe it's an Ukrainian shop. It's a 32, well, I'm stitching it on a 32 count even weave. And um, my fabric color is actually lavender. Um, it's just a spigered one. Uh, and I'm stitching it in a combination of various flosses that I found in my stash. Uh, so it was a very spontaneous start. I found a chart like a day before Valentine's and I decided I was going to start it for Valentine's because it's perfect for Valentine's. Um, and so I didn't have time to buy anything. So I was just going to go and stitch it with whatever I found in my stash. Uh, so that's what I did. Um, so let me show you. Uh, so I managed to sti stitch 1734 stitches and this is how far it got me. Okay. So this is my version of it, quite different to the original. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know <laughs> if you're going to like it or not. Uh, it's very pink and purple. Um, yeah, it's just different, but uh, I don't know. I think it all originated with the fabric, uh, kind of. And then I was thinking, oh, I'd like the, the hearts to be more pink rather than red. And then from there, I thought, actually, the house doesn't look right anymore on this fabric and with these hearts. So I should change the house, too. And then I was just looking for whatever flosses I found in my stash. And somehow it ended up being like this. OK, uh, so now let me show you with my front camera how it really looks like. <laughs> Okay, so Love is Here sampler is such a cute, such a cute little sampler. And it's actually one that, I don't know, I can maybe needed to see it today <laughs> to remind myself why I picked it up. And, um, you know, I had this kind of dream of um, having it in my, in our future home. Uh, you know, maybe like when you come into the, to the flat, you know, and you enter the hallway or something you see this and it says love is here and it's got these two cute little sheep um i think that would be really really sweet to have sorry guys i don't know i'm getting emotional you know i didn't know if i should record this video today because i'm so all over the place with my emotions today um <laughs> um and it's stupid it's just a stupid cross stitch project right and for some reason, sometimes, you know, that's the thing, we pick up projects because they mean something to us. And um, and I think this one does mean something to me. So when I picked it up, I really, I was really keen. I really wanted to stitch it. So I spent most of the Valentine's <laughs> stitching this, actually. <laughs> and then I took it uh, to Paris, but I didn't get a lot of stitching done in Paris. Uh, so mostly, most of it I stitched on Valentine's and then a little bit in Paris. Um, and then I kind of, um, I had to leave it and pick up some other projects. Um, but um, I think it's such a lovely sampler. I don't normally stitch samplers, but I think this one is really cute. And uh, yeah, so it's stitched on just a very simple fabric, 32 count even weave that I found in my stash. I believe it's color lavender. It's just like very pale purple. So I like the original colors of it, but but then I thought it's not really very me. Um, so I, initially I considered stitching the original colors and then I was like, no, I think I think I'm going to I want to make the heart more pink. I want it to be a bit more pinkish and I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I wanted to modernize it a little bit as well. And so because I wanted to make the hearts pink, I picked some floss that I found in my stash. Uh, that's actually not DMC. I think most of it is uh, Leo and Roxy. Well, sorry, Roxy, Roxy Flosco. Um, and then I was thinking, oh, what do I do with the house? And for some reason, I, I don't know, in my head, I thought, 
like what color would work on this fabric and with the pink hearts and I thought if, if the house maybe was like purplish like maybe purple would work and then I found this floss I had in my stash and I thought okay I'm just gonna use that one so let me show you I've got this lovely project bag that I um I got in my smalls exchange um uh, during the stitch in London um from oh my goodness what's the lady's name Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness I'm having like a, a freeze a brain freeze I'm I'm telling you my, my brain is not working not working today at all give me a second guys I'll tell you what what's the name of the person who made this bag I actually think I still have a note from her here because it was such a cute note I kept it it's Valerie yeah, the name of the lady is Valerie, and she, she's um, she's a very lovely person. Uh, she also lives in London, and um, she's also a scientist, actually, and um, I think she graduated recently, and uh, she was looking into finding work in science, so I hope that's going well. I'm not sure if Valerie's watching this video, but if you are, then I hope everything's going well for you, Valerie. But anyway, um, so Valerie made me this lovely bag. It's beautiful. And inside this bag, I've got the flosses um, that I use for this project. With the bunny from Edita. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I've got some pinks here. They all... No, actually, so one is Gentle Art. That's Poppy. And originally, when I ordered Poppy, I thought it was going to be red. But it turns out that Poppy and Gentle Art is a very pink pink. Just in case if you ever fall into the same trap, <laughs> don't expect poppies to be red, always. Um, and then we have two pinks from Roxy Flosco. One is South Beach, that lighter one. And the other one is Pink 182, this one. They're all beautiful pinks. I really like actually pinks, stitching with pinks. And they're such beautiful bright colors, love them. Um, then I have a green, which is turf, also from Rio. Uh, Rio. <laughs> Leon Rock. I don't know, I keep calling it wrong. So it used to be Leon, Leon Roxy, and now it's Roxy only, and I seem to always forget that it's Roxy and not Leon. Yeah, it's the whole thing. So, turf. And then I have also some, um, a grey sample that I got on Stitch in London. Uh, it's called Titanium. And I also have this light, very light pink, which is called um, Bella Rosa, and that's from Classic Color Works. It really, really, these are just flosses I had in my box of um, fancy flosses, which I never really use. And I just picked the ones that I thought may work. And I think they're the really lovely colors. And then I had this floss that I ordered. Um, so I once placed an order from River Hat river hat designs on etsy they're based in the uk and they dye fabrics um like really lovely fabrics actually uh, but they also dye some uh, some floss and so i got this um sorry it's now a mess but i got this purple floss um i kind of just put it in the floss away bag <laughs> so it's this tangly mess uh, but it's this uh, variegated purple slash pink floss which is called magical mischief and it's the one that i i'm using for the house so it's this one let me just put something behind the house right a little board okay i don't know if you can hear a french horn uh we've got a neighbor who plays french horn he must be a professional musician because he plays like every day uh so if you can hear french horn that's um that's my neighbor uh, so that's the house and <laughs> I've got one sheep stitched um, and yeah the a little bit of the border a little bit of the the text and that's it really so that's what I managed to get done on this project um, and I don't know what else to say so I guess we can maybe move on to the next one <laughs> I'm really struggling with the light today, guys. It's kind of 
there's like I don't even know where it's coming from. Where is it coming from? I put the blinds on my on my windows and I still have this touch of light coming right on my forehead. So anyway, I'm gonna try and sit so that you don't see it. Uh, but anyway, my last final start and also finish was the Winter Bear Winter Bear by Nora Corbett. Uh, so this one, I found this chart on Lakeside Needlecraft in December and straight away I ordered it together with fabric and flosses and beads and, and the star uh, and I wanted to stitch it but then obviously I ran out of time in December because I had so much Christmas stitching uh, so I thought okay then I'm going to stitch it at the start of the year and then I found out about the um, cross stitch winter camp from Colorado Cross Stitcher and I thought okay this is going to be the perfect project for it. So that's what I stitched it for. So I started it on the 4th of February and I finished it on the 28th of February. So just before the end of the month, <sighs> I just made it. <laughs> um, so, so yes, yeah, so this is what it's meant to look like. I bought a fabric from Lakeside Needlecraft. It's a printed uh, even weave uh, in Arctic sky. It's iridescent, so it's kind of like opalescent and sparkly. Um, and I'm stitching it, uh, well, I've stitched it with the called for threads. Um, I didn't stitch, I didn't stitch the C, the double bit that you can see at the bottom. I didn't stitch that, uh, but you will see that in a minute. And yeah, I only made some very, very minor changes, but most of it is stitched as called for. So, well, I really, I should just show you in the video. So I will tell you now, I've managed to stitch 3,000 and 3013 stitches on this project and I will just show you a snapshot here of the finished project. Yay! Because <laughs> it's such a lovely picture I think. Um, but now I will just show you the video straight away uh, for more details um, and yeah because I will show you the project properly and I will tell you all the things that I've changed and um, all that. Uh, so you can go and watch the video and then I will see you later um, to talk about my whips. <laughs> so this is exciting guys. Because this is my first finish for 2024. <laughs> it was a start and a finish for February. Uh, it was my project for the winter cross stitch camp um, from the Colorado cross stitcher. Uh, so Sherry from Colorado Cross Stitcher, um, she's got a YouTube channel, uh, which I will link below, and she's got a Facebook group, and basically you can join um, Winter Cross Stitch Camp, and she also has Summer Cross Stitch Camp, and every year there's like a different um, theme, and this year it was stitching an animal, and so basically um, we started at the start of the month, and if you finish by the end of the month, you get entered for a prize, I think. Um, I think you get entered for a prize even if you don't finish, but you have like another, there's like another entry or, or another prize if you do finish. And um, I had this chart I really wanted to stitch and I already had it kitted up. Uh, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to try. Although it's a bit of a big chart to do in a month. And that's kind of why I ran out of time to do the other things that I was meant to do this month. Um, because I could either do these things or I could finish this project. So I had to choose and I decided to finish my bear. So I finished it. I finished my bear. Yay. Look at him. Oh, <laughs> sorry, he's falling. Falling, falling, falling. This is the Winter Bear by Nora Corbett. Mm. How beautiful. He is lovely. He is stitched on a 28 count. I'm trying to show you the sparkle on the fabric. It's an iridescent lakeside needlecraft printed fabric. So printed, it means that on the back it's white, on the front is blue. And the color is called Arctic Sky, which I think is very fitting, fitting <laughs> for this occasion. And he is stitched almost as called for. Um, I didn't stitch the C. There's like a blue C underneath and here. I didn't really think it was necessary. Um, 
I kind of find it a bit weird because it's just like a rectangle and then it ends and I'm like, well, I'm not sure what to do with that. Uh, so I decided to just stitch the eyes like the whatever you call it, the eyes that he's sitting on. Um, so that's all stitched as called for. It's got a water lily silk in it, the blue, the blue stuff. That's water lily silk. And that's the first time I've ever stitched with it. And I didn't really... I was expecting more. <laughs> you know, everybody always talks about the silks and the water lilies. And I don't know, I thought I was going to be like amazed. But maybe it's just not enough of it here. And I was like, well, I paid like five pounds for it. And I really don't know why. <laughs> I was like, I could have just used blue DMC. I would have been equally happy. So that was a little bit disappointing. Um, other than that, <laughs> it was fine. Um, and then, uh, because it was also, it was meant to be variegated, but there's barely any variegation in it. Like, honestly, so what's the point? Um, and then, then there's these lovely beads down here. And this is all beaded as well. Beads, beads, beads. And I used a different star, so I can't remember. It's a Mill Hill treasure that's charted, and I saw this star on Lakeside, and I thought it would fit really well. Uh, so I bought this star. It's also from Mill Hill. Um, and also I had to use different charms here. Well, not charms, uh, treasures, sorry. And uh, These are also Mill Hill um, treasures, but they didn't have the color that was called for in Lakeside, so I just picked a different color that was kind of similar. Um, the only thing I'm not sure about it was um, stitching it on 28 count, because, I mean, it was good for the beading, but um, I feel like the bear has a lot of holes. Like, you know, um, with 28 count, sometimes you can almost see the holes between the stitches. I can't explain it. And I don't pull my stitches very tight either. I just kind of, I don't, I try really not to put like extra pressure on them, but still it's kind of holy. And so I think if I was doing it on 32 count, I wouldn't run into this issue of like seeing the holes between the stitches. I don't know if it's just the 28 count fabric is a bit looser, looser weave. So it's just the the actual like weaves of the fabric get get pulled to the side and you you can see the holes between them so i think with with it being white it's very visible um so that's a little bit of an issue for me but anyway it doesn't matter i'm i'm still you know i'm still going to i have to finish it somehow i haven't decided how i'm going to finish him if you guys have any suggestions uh please let me know uh, but anyway he's done Dun, dun, dun. And he's very cute. Very, very cute bear. Uh, so I'm very happy with him. Um, yeah. My first finish for 2024. How exciting. Yay. <laughs> and it was a start and a finish in one month. And also, it was my first Nora Corbett finish. I've never finished anything by Nora Corbett. So now I can tick that off my list as well. Uh, so that was good. Okay, so works in progress or whips. Um, so I've, so as I said, I stitched on total of 10 projects uh, in the month of February. I've already shown you my three new starts. So now we have seven whips to go through. And I will try to be fairly brief this week, um, this month, because last month I spent quite a lot of time talking about each project and my video ended up being very long. Uh, so I'm just going to go through my whips quite quickly because most of them you would have seen recently anyway. So there's not much point like spending a lot of time explaining each of them. So I will just kind of give you a brief overview of each of them. And then if you have any specific questions about any of them, please um, drop me a comment and then I can discuss that in more details in my next video. Okay, so here's the list of all the whips I worked on in February that were already pre-existing whips. Um, and yeah, you can see how many stitches I've done on each of them when they were started. Um, and then, um, yeah, we're just going to go through them one by one. So I'm going to go through them in order from the one that I stitched on the most to the one that I stitched on the least. Okay, so let's do it. 
So the first web is the Sea of Love by MP Studio. Uh, this one is a kit. It came with 18 count ADA. Um, it's just a white ADA. And I believe it came with gamma threads. I think it may be a Russian kit. Uh, so even the ship has like uh, Russian writing on it. Um, yeah, I'm, pr I'm probably not going to stitch that because I don't even know what it says. Um, but yeah, this is what it's meant to look like. I thought it's, it was a very fitting project for Valentine's. So I thought, yeah, okay, I'm going to stitch on it in February. And I'm very happy with how much progress I got done. So let me show you. Um, so this is where the project was at the, at the end of January 2024. I didn't actually stitch on it in January. I don't actually remember last time I stitched on it, but it was quite a while ago. Um, but anyway, this is where it was before the start of February. And now this is where it is now. Okay, so that's not too bad. Uh, so 1170 stitches that I counted that I managed to stitch. Um, so you can see now the cats actually look like they're cats. I finished the top of the ship and a little bit more of the sky. Uh, so most of the sky is actually done in half stitch. So that's quite fast going. So I need to finish that sky and then I need to actually stitch the bottom of the chart as well. So let me now show you on the video what this project looks like um, in kind of real life. <laughs> Although I know it's not in real life, but it's more than just seeing a picture, just uh, you know, seeing it on the video. Oh, it's got so dark. Why is it so dark all of a sudden? Come on, camera. Ooh. Is it lighter? I think it's it's a little bit brighter. <laughs> okay, sorry guys, my camera is struggling today with, with the changing light, with the changing weather. Um, so the first project I stitched on in February, uh, that was my existing whip, was this lovely project. Um, do I have, well, you, you would have seen the picture by now uh, on my presentation. It's a kit, basically. It's a kit with, uh, with gamma threads and it came on whatever, I think 18 count Ada. And I'm just stitching it as it came in the kit. Uh, so this is how far I got. Uh, so you can really see the cats now. Um, I haven't done any backstitch yet, so they're not backstitched. But I think all the cross stitching in the cats is done. And um, I think I started doing the sky. So I finished the top of the ship, the cats, and I'm missing the background here. And then obviously there's the bottom half of the chart that I still haven't stitched. So still quite a bit to do, um, but it's it's getting there slowly. So I may pick it up again in March. We will see if I have time, uh, because I would like to try and get closer to a finish of this project. Uh, but yeah, it's looking more more like it should now. <laughs> it's not just looking like a blob anymore. So so that's a good thing. Um, yeah, it's mostly cross stitches, but there's some half stitches in there as well. And that's really it, I think. Again, I don't know what else to say about this project. So, um, yeah. So I think we can move on to whatever's next. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second project that I stitched on uh, was Fairy Flora. Uh, so that's um, that's a Mirabilia design. It's actually out of print now. I didn't know this until uh, one of my viewers or maybe it was someone on Instagram told me that um, they're also stitching it and they told me it's actually out of print now. Uh, so at the time when I bought it, it was still in print. Um, so it's a lovely chart, uh, but it's quite stitch heavy and I've been stitching it for a while now. I think I started it back at the end of 2021 and um, I didn't really stitch on it at all last year. Um, so now I'm trying to pick it back up and I'm trying to actually get some proper progress on it and I'm hoping to get it finished by the end of the year. Uh, but I need to really get get more work done on it um, because so far I've only managed a little bit in January and a little bit in February. Uh, so I'm stitching it on 32 count even weave from Zweigart. It's just a slate blue from, um, so, so it's a Murano in slate blue. And I'm stitching it um, in the cold for threads mostly, but I'm replacing some of the beads with Krennic. And I'm kind of tweaking a little bit the, the sparkly bits. Uh, so like the Krennic and the beads, I'm modifying a little bit. So you will see that. This is quite different to the original design in my version. 
Um, but this is where it was in January and I didn't manage to get a lot done. So I just managed to do a little bit on the dress. So that's 563 stitches total, which sounds like a lot, but it doesn't look like a lot <laughs> at all. You can barely see the difference. Um, yeah, that dress is a monster dress. Um, <laughs> so many stitches in that dress. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so yeah, not a whole lot of progress, um, but you know, Every progress is like a, a small step forward. So I will keep going with that dress in March and hopefully we'll get a bit further along the project. Okay, let me show you on the video how she's looking now. Okay, so because I've shown you this one last month and not a whole lot has changed since then. So I'm just going to show this one very quickly and not going to spend too much time on this. But this is my fairy flora. Um, So... Basically, I've just managed to add some stitches to the bottom of her dress and stitch this this part as well. Um, I can't honestly quite, quite remember where exactly she was last month, but I think I've just added some of this pink stuff. I think it was around like 400 stitches that I've added, so not a whole lot. So she hasn't changed very much. Um, she's still got a long way to go but again i'm going to try and stitch on her every month um hopefully i find some more time this coming month to stitch on her but then i always say that but you know at least if i try to stitch a little bit every month um one day i will manage to finish that that dress because that dress is a lot of stitching guys i tell you it is a lot of stitching um yeah so she's also stitched on 32 count murano very simple fabric um Mostly with DMCs. Yeah, it's, it's actually just DMCs and some Krennic. And then some beads. Um, so that's it really, I think, for her. Yay! But she's so beautiful. <laughs> then the next project is The Dreaming Girl um, by Barbara Anna Designs. Um, I'm stitching it on a 32 count even weave dyed by River Hat Designs on Etsy and the fabric color is Lagoon Depths, uh, which is a lovely light blue color that you will see in a minute on the video as well. And I'm just stitching her in DMC 2 over 2 with some very minor modifications that I will also explain in the video. Um, so this is what she looked like at the end of January 2024. But again, she hasn't been stitched on in a while. Uh, I'm not sure actually if I stitched. Uh, yeah, I think like a year ago, February 2023 was the last time I stitched on her. And now I've picked her, uh, picked her up again and this is where I got to. So I managed to stitch 549 stitches on her in the month of February. So not a whole lot, but we have a little bit of progress. Um, so that kind of bottom row uh, is almost complete. I just, I'm just missing some snow on the trees, I think. This is one of the projects where I've discovered, you know, you know, when you pick up a project and you don't realize that you have a needle at the back of it with a thread still hanging. <laughs> Cause probably I was taking a picture of it and I left the needle at the back and then I completely forgot. I never finished the floss. So. There it is. So, <laughs> so this is The Dreaming Girl by Barbara Anna. Uh, this is how far I got. Um, I really like this project. I think it looks really good. Though I was a little bit unsure because I made a change and then I thought, oh, maybe it, was, it wasn't it was a good idea. But then I couldn't really be bothered frogging it out. So I thought I'll leave it for now. If it looks really bad at the end, I may frog it out and change it. Uh, but for now, I'm going to keep it. So basically I stitched all these trees and the, this house and these trees here, uh, but I stitched the trees in green, but they actually charted in grey, but I wasn't sure about grey trees, so I thought maybe I'll make them green because they're trees. Um, so they're a little bit different to charted and I don't know if that's for the better or for worse, so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to stitch the rest of the chart and see how it looks and if they look weird then I may change them to grey. Um, yeah, so that's the only change I've made, I think. As, as I said, like, I've also changed the color of her shirt to white. Um, and yeah, that's it, really. I don't know what else to say. So this is the fabric from um, River Hat Designs. Uh, so I showed you 
the floss uh, for the Love is Here sampler. The purple floss, that's the same company that uh, so River had designs on Etsy and uh, the same dyer uh, for the fabric and the floss. It's a lovely fabric actually, it's super soft. And this one is a 32 count even weave and it's a beautiful light blue color. And these fabrics are not too expensive actually. So um, if you're looking for, for a light blue, I would definitely recommend this one. Um, it's really pretty and really nice to stitch on as well. That's River Hat Designs. Um, so I think that's it about this project. Um, then we can move on to the next. Then the next project is Wisdom by Heaven and Earth Designs. And this is artwork by Tom Allen. Um, and this one I'm stitching on the fabric from Pulse Stitches. Uh, it's a 28 count even weave and I'm stitching it in 2 over 110 stitch. And the fabric color is Daybreak and it's this beautiful purpley bluish uh, sky color, which you will see in a minute. And uh, obviously it's a hate, so it's just stitched in DMCs. Um, so I didn't get a whole lot done on this project. So this is where the, the wisdom, the owls were in January, at the end of January 2024. And now this is where they are now. So it's kind of like a spot the difference exercise. Um, <laughs> There's a little bit more, um, they're just a little bit more filled in, but this it's it's barely, barely any difference really, because on a height, 450 stitches is like nothing. Okay, so here are my owls. I mean, not a lot has changed. So again, this is one of the disappointing projects <laughs> in some ways, because um, it being like a full coverage, well, I mean, full coverage with no background project, um, so a height. It's, you know, it needs quite a lot of stitching in order to see any difference. And this is not really a lot of stitching. I only did like 400 stitches. Um, so it's a very small change from last month. But the fabric looks so good today, isn't it? I think, I think with the blind shut, you can really see the, um, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the different colors in the fabric, the beautiful purples and blues. And um, I really like that the sky effect. Um, yes, I think it actually looks quite good on the camera. Yes, that's my owls. Uh, so they're stitched in 10 stitch, two over one on 28 count. Mm, I would like to stitch more on them in the next month. But then I always say that about all of my projects. Um, so we will see. <laughs> Hopefully I get more than 400 stitches done in March. But I mean, you know, 400 stitches is better than no stitches. So it's always progress. Um, I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm, I'm really struggling today to know, to know what to say. You know, my video last month ended up being so long that I'm just really worried I'm going to start blabbling again and I'm going to make this video like two hours long. So, so I think I'm just going to be brief today. And then if you ask me something, then I will, well, A, I will respond to you in the comment, but B, then they will give me something to talk about next month you know i can answer your question next month if you ask me something interesting so go ahead and ask me things guys and i will try my best to answer next time <laughs> okay let's move on to the next one the next project i have to show you is aquarium uh so this one is a kit Oh, I just I just realized I didn't record a video for it, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to record it now. Um, yeah, after I do this slide. Uh, yes, <laughs> I forgot about the aquarium. Um, so the aquarium is a kit by Luca S or Lucas, and uh, it comes with a 16 count Ada. It's a gridded Ada uh, from Zweigart, um, and it's uh, like a cream color Ada rather than white, um, and I, oh, I need to correct this. So this is stitch two over one because it's Ada. Uh, and I love this project. So I'm stitching this. It's, a, it's actually a stitch along with, with Lizzie, who I mentioned earlier. The Lizzie, whose channel name I never remember. Um, <laughs> that Lizzie, <laughs> she will be linked in the description below. Uh, Mrs. Fisher, uh, Lizzie stitches. Um, yes, <laughs> or some variation of that. <laughs> We are doing um, 
a hashtag which I don't know if either of us has posted on recently, but it's <laughs> the, the theoretical hashtag for this style is a nice fishy style. Um, I will add a hashtag to the slide here just so that you know what it is in case if you would like to join us in Stitching the Aquarium. It's a lovely project, it's super colourful, so it's very, very fun to stitch. Um, so yeah, if you like colourful things, I recommend this project, it is really fun. <laughs> Uh, so, this is where I was with the aquarium at the end of January 2024. So again, it's one of these projects that I get a little bit progress done every month, but it's not a lot, so you can barely see the difference. But in February, I managed to stitch 422 stitches. Um, mainly, they were the, the ones in the, the, the tail, so I finished the tail of the fish and a little bit of like that background um, pond or whatever it is, um, yeah, just added some stitches here and there. Um, yeah, again, you know, it sounds like a lot for 122. It really doesn't look like a lot on the picture. Um, so yeah, now I have to actually go and record the video so that you have something to watch <laughs> when I'm done with this slide. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, so I forgot to record this video, so, <laughs> so I'm recording it now. Um, so I've got one final project, well, I mean, it's not final in order, but one, one that I haven't recorded yet uh, that I need to show you is the Aquarium, Aquarium by Luca S. Um, so it's a kit that you've already seen it in my slide. So in the meantime, I've checked <laughs> Lizzie's channel name. <laughs> <laughs> and it couldn't be simpler. I think she's changed it. But her channel name is Lizzie Fisher. Her handle is uh, at Mrs. Fisher Stitches. Uh, so I will put that in the description below. And hopefully if you click on it, that should take you to her channel, which has a very simple name, uh, Lizzie Fisher, uh, which makes me even more confused now why I keep misremembering it. <laughs> But hopefully you can find her. She is lovely. And she's also stitching the aquarium, but she's stitching it on um, 25 or 28 count um, over one. So hers is going to be tiny. Whilst I'm stitching it on the fabric from the kit, so on Ada, 16 count Ada, so mine is uh, much bigger than hers. Uh, we are in a similar kind of amount. Uh, I think she may have slightly more than me. Uh, she stitched the lily pad here. Uh, which is really cool. Uh, I so far only really stitched the fish and a little bit of this um, pond water here. But that's where my fishes are for this month. Yay! They're so bright and colourful. I love this project. It is a very lovely, happy project. Yeah! Uh, so again, I don't know what else to say, uh, but I just wanted to show you this on the video. <laughs> I think this video is going to be very disjointed, guys. I keep forgetting what I need to say. So, um, <laughs> but anyway, thank you for being there. So, on to the next project now. <laughs> so, the next project that I stitched on in February was Fairy Tales Live on the Roofs. So, this is a kit again, that, uh, it's a kit from RTO. Um, and this one I'm stitching on a 16 count Ada um, from Pop Stitching Aberdeen. So I went um, on about this in detail in a lot of my previous videos uh, about the fact that I restarted this project on a different fabric. Uh, so now I'm just going to give you the brief version, which is, yeah, that's the fabric I'm stitching it on. <laughs> if you want to hear the full story, please watch my previous videos. Um, the fabric color is candy floss, so it's this kind of lovely rainbowy fabric, and I'm stitching it in DMCs with, with a bit of cranic as well, um, and I'm stitching it two over one. Um, so this is where the project was at the end of January, and I had the, the goal, <laughs> the unmet goal, of finishing it in February. I didn't finish it, but I'm still very happy with how much progress I got done. Uh, so I'm just plodding along with the back stitching now. So I managed to get 356 back stitches in. Uh, so I think I'm halfway there with the back stitching um, because I just had these like buildings at the bottom left. 
So I just need to finish that and I think I can get it finished in March. Hopefully. Yay. So it should be in March finish. So now let me show you on the video what it's looking like. So I didn't manage to finish um, this project, which I know it was one of my goals to finish it in February. But I think like I got halfway there. So all that I have, le all that I had left at the start of February was the backstitch on the houses. And I managed to do about half of it, I think. Um, so now I need to finish. I think I've done everything on these two houses and a little bit of this one, but I need to still finish this one, then do this one and then just finish this one and then I'm done. So I'm almost there, guys. It's a lot of backstitch. Um, and, you know, backstitch, I like it, but um, not like doing it consecutively for multi for like many days. Um, so I think I spent like two days backstitching this and then I've decided, okay, I need to move on to something else. Uh, but I think I had lots of goals for February, so that's also part of the reason. So I may be able, hopefully, to finish her in March and then she'll be done for good. Uh, so fingers crossed that's going to happen. So that's my fairy tale. Lives on the roofs. Um, a bit of close up on the... So you can see the backstage that I've done here on the houses. Good. It looks good on the camera, actually. Yeah. She's getting there. I can't wait to have her frame, actually. I think she's going to look lovely. I'm not sure where I'm going to put her. I'm kind of thinking whether I should... Maybe give her to my mom, but I don't know yet. For now, I may keep her here. Then when I have too many things, give her to my mom. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I will definitely frame her. Um, so yeah, hopefully in March we can, we can do this. We can finish her. Okay, so the final project that I have to show you today, um, and really the, that's not very impressive, so it's going to be very brief. Um, but this is a stitch along. Um, which um, quite a few people are stitching this really but i think originally um the channel that i found out about it from was uh, brenda the handwork maniac maniac uh, i will link her channel below uh, so she's stitching it with another floss tuber and then some of my stitchy friends are stitching it and the stitching owl is stitching it as well uh, so there's multiple people doing this um, um, I joined in late, uh, but I decided, uh, because they started in October, but I actually joined in January with the first birdhouse and I want to do one birdhouse every month. But the issue was because of the polar bear, because I wanted to finish the, the winter bear uh, chart uh, for the Colorado cross stitcher winter camp. So because I was trying so hard to finish that, I ran out of time to actually do my birdhouse this month. So I barely started on my February part. And now my goal is to do both parts in March. So do both the finish the February part and then do the March part. And then I should hopefully be caught up by the end of March because they're not very big, these um, individual bird, birdhouses. You know, it's, it's not that much stitching. So I should hopefully be able to catch up by the end of March and then hopefully, you know, do one birdhouse every month again. So I'm stitching it on 32 count even weave in um, mocha and white flower. flower. Um, and the chart is from Jardin Privé and it's originally called in French Au fil de nichoir. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure, but it's, I think it means like a line of nests or something like that. Um, and you can use the hashtag birdhouse sal, and there's another hashtag as well, um, but I'm just using this one. And uh, so last month, um, I only finished, as I said, the January birdhouse, so this is where I was. And now, so far, I've only managed to do this many stitches, so 252. Uh, so I've only started on that February part. I still need to actually stitch the, the actual birdhouse and then the rest of the fence, and, and then I need to do the March part as well now this month. So let me show you on the video what it looks like. Unfortunately, this is a little bit disappointing um, because I really wanted to keep up with the sal. But my plan is after, after this video is to pick up this project and stitch both the February and the March part so that I am still up to date with the sal. So this is the birdhouse stitch along. 
So in January, I stitched the first house, which was, which was the January bird house. And the plan was in February to stitch the February house. And I managed to stitch the cloud, the flower, and a little bit of the fence. Um, but I really, I only had one day <laughs> left <laughs> because I only picked it up at the very end of February because I ran out of time. Um, so that's the next project I'm stitching on after this video. Uh, because I really want to catch up and it's not it's not gonna take long I just need to stitch the house and the birds and then the next house uh, so you know this is fully totally doable so hopefully um, by the end of March you will see both the February house and the March house and uh, for now we just have January and, and a little bit of the fence really and the daffodil we've got lots of daffodils in the UK now they came out really early this year I think Everybody's confused with the weather. I love daffodils. They're my favorite flowers, I think. Mm. Yeah, so that's that's my birdhouse cell, really. I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, if you have any questions about any of my projects, just drop me a message in the comments and I will respond. <laughs> okay, so I think this is everything. So I can just take you back to my presentation just to go through my goals as we did, la did last month. Is going through my goals for 2024 and for the month and see how I did <laughs> or how I didn't do. Um, and then maybe just make some plans for next month. Before I do that, um, before I like switch you to the other screen, in terms of plans... Um, for next month I don't have a lot really I mean I have some but I'm thinking that in March I want to kind of take it easy as well with stitching um, because I haven't really had much time to do other things and I do want to do other things as well um, you know like other crafts but also like um, I don't know basically you know I've I recently come back to reading a little bit I also um, trying to study a little bit as well for work um so there's lots of things um you know i want to try and do my crochet project which hasn't really gone anywhere um so i think in march i may try to to take it a little bit more easy on the stitching which means that probably my number of stitches will drop a little bit so i can't really be too ambitious um, but I am aware that spring is coming, um, so really there should be something spring related coming my way, hopefully. Uh, I am thinking about picking up the spring dragon, the Easter dragon, uh, because it is, you know, this time of the year and because it's the dragon year, uh, so I should really pick him up. Um, I'm thinking about maybe, I don't know, stitching like a bunny or doing a crochet bunny or something like that um and yeah i don't know may maybe finishing my honey makers my bee project potentially starting another bee project um i got some lovely flosses for a bee project that i really want to stitch uh so that's kind of um yeah i'm thinking about starting it and yeah maybe starting another dragon uh, dragon project uh, so yeah just kind of yeah there may be some some exciting starts or, or whips coming up in March but that's one thing that I wanted to kind of warn you about that there may be a little bit less stitching in March but obviously we're just gonna have to see how it goes so let me just take you now to to my summary slides and I think that's it for today um so so yeah we're almost there guys <laughs> Oh, and one more thing I forgot to, to say that I bought. Um, so what, actually one of my very, very first cross-stitch projects uh, was stitching um, a bookmark, um, which then my husband uh, lost. Yes, I gave it to my husband because he didn't have a bookmark and that was the biggest mistake of my life uh, because now my one of the first ever things I stitched is gone. But uh, it was a butterfly bookmark that I got from John Lewis at the time. And you can still buy them all over the place. They are all online. So I bought a new one. So I'm going to stitch it again. This time I'm not going to give it to my husband. It's for me. Um, but it's a lovely butterfly bookmark. And um, 
yeah, and I thought because this uh, March is a spring month, uh, so that would be a nice thing to stitch in March, uh, because also I came back to reading a little bit, so I am in need, in desperate need of a good bookmark, so that would be a great project, I think, so hopefully that will come out in March, uh, so I can get some stitching done on my bookmark. So just wanted to share that with you guys as well. <laughs> Okay, so this brings us to the end of the video pretty much. So this is now just the final summary. So my goals for 2024, uh, <laughs> what were they? And did I meet any of them or did I just give up on them already? Um, <laughs> so, my, so my goals for 2024 were very generic. Uh, they weren't like specific goals for specific projects in most cases. And they were more like, oh, I would like to try to to stick to this rule, you know, kind of thing um, and see if I can get some more progress. Like, and for example, I wanted to, to work on less projects overall, but get more progress done. However, I <laughs> am not sure that I'm really achieving that. I actually, I'm, I'm quite sure I'm not achieving that. As you've seen, I seem to, for some reason, I struggle to do less than 10 projects in a month. Um, I don't know, I just seem to really like having multiple projects and switching between them. And uh, I always find an excuse, whether it's a stitch along, whether it's a prompt somewhere that I've seen that makes me want to stitch on an, on another project. But I just like switching between projects. So, so far, the less projects, more progress um, hasn't been going so very well. But having said that, you know, I have managed to get a finish in the month of February. Um, I have managed to get some um, some significant progress on some of the projects. So it's not like I'm completely not getting any progress on anything. So it's kind of like could be better. I could also be worse. <laughs> Um, then another kind of generic type of goal was uh, for 2024 was to stitch more on older whips rather just having lots of new starts and stitching on newer projects but forgetting my older whips. So I actually think that I did pretty well in the month of February regarding this. I know I had three new starts, I'm fully aware of that, but I managed to do um, however many stitches it was, I forgot now, <laughs> on the Sea of Love, which is a whip that I started, I can't quite remember, but I think it was the end of 2021. Um, I did a little bit of stitching on Fairy Flora, uh, which is also a 2021 whip. Um, what else was there? There was like another one. Mm, I forgot now all the projects I've shown you. Uh, the Dreaming Girl is quite an old whip as well, um, but I think like there was another one. Well, the Fairy Tales Live on the Roofs, uh, that's my oldest whip actually. So I did manage to get some progress um, and you know, for, for the Sea of Love, that was actually significant progress on some of my older whips. So as long as I'm not like abandoning them and I'm actually managing to do some progress on them, then I'm happy. Uh, so I'm actually happy with what I did for this goal. Work consistently, consistently on a hate. <laughs> yeah, that is still not happening. You know what? I keep watching people work on hates and full coverage pieces, and I get so jealous. I'm like, I want to do this too. You know, I want to see some of some people have amazing progress. Like the stitching owl, she has amazing progress on her owl. Like she she works on it consistently, and she's getting so amazing progress every month. Um, then I was watching, I found this new channel that I didn't know about, Darling Bluebell. Uh, she has these big, she only pretty much almost, almost exclusively stitches full coverages and she has really big projects, but she has lots of progress. And I'm like, oh, that looks so gorgeous. You know, I'd love to have something like that. Um, and I keep saying every month, this month, I'm going to actually get some proper progress. I'm going to pick up a full coverage piece and get a lot of progress done on it. But it somehow just never happens. Um, so that's a bit sad. But you know, I did try. <laughs> I did just a little bit. I ran out of time, really. I ran out of time. But I tried to do just a little bit of work on the wisdom. Um, and also I was thinking, you know, the aquarium. Actually, the aquarium is also a full coverage piece. So, so I also managed to do a bit of work on that. So it's not that I didn't do any full coverage. Um, finish my first mirabilia. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, I put a smiley face because <laughs> not because I finished, but but actually no, I know why I put a smiley face because I did finish my first Nora Corbett, so I have to give myself a smiley face for that. It wasn't a mirabilia, it wasn't a fancy lady, it was a fancy bear. But I did finish uh, a Nora Corbett in February, so I think I have to acknowledge that. And then also I did manage to get like 500 stitches on uh, Fairy Flora. Uh, so I know it's nowhere near being finished yet, but I am making consistent progress on it. So I think it deserves a smiley face. So I'm being kind to myself and I'm saying, okay, you did a good job overall. And now here I didn't do a good job at all because I was meant to stitch on Hummingbird Pixie. Um, I'm trying to... <laughs> My, my goal for 2024 was to try and finish my first Bella Filipina, uh, but in order to finish it, I have to actually stitch on it, and that still hasn't happened. So that's a sad face, unfortunately, and um, I really wanted to stitch on her in February, and again, I just really ran out of time. Uh, so hopefully March, hopefully I don't run out of time this time, <laughs> we're going to have to see. <laughs> Stitch on a Christmas on Christmas projects or ornaments throughout the year. And I actually gave myself a smiley face for this because the winter bear is in it, it is a Christmas project really. It's it's a I know you can say it's a winter project, but actually he has like a Christmassy scarf with, with a Christmas tree sticking here. And it is the kind of project that you would want around your house over Christmas. So I count the winter bear as a Christmas project and I stitched on it a lot. I actually finished it. So that's a smiley face then. And then am I happy that I stitch on what I love and how I love uh, in the month of February? And I have to say yes. I only stitched on projects that I wanted to stitch on only stitch some projects that made me happy and only stitch some them in a way that makes me happy as well picking my the colors that i liked um the fabrics that i liked and um yeah i'm really happy actually with um you know i think i met that goal uh, in february okay so now very quickly let's just have a look at the specific goals that i set at the end of last month for february and see how i did with them so um, first of all, we've already discussed, I didn't manage to stitch the next bed house, so unfortunately that's a sad face, but I'm hoping to catch up in March. Uh, also, I didn't manage to finish Fairy Tales Live on the Roofs, um, but I kind of got halfway there, so I'm hoping again that that will be a finish in March now, and I, I did make a good progress on it, so I am getting there to, to be able to finish it. So it's not a completely sad face. I did start a dragon project. Yay. So that's one goal done. And uh, I did stitch an owl, although not as much as I wanted to stitch an owl. So it's kind of like, me, you know, I, I tried, I stitched a little bit on an owl, but I would like to stitch more owls. <laughs> uh, because I love owls. And also I wanted to participate in a stitch an owl style. Uh, and I wanted to also stitch the ornaments from um, Mama Loves UGB. Uh, so I've got lots of owl goals. Uh, I found another small owl chart I'm hoping to stitch for someone. So, so yeah, I really need to do some more owl stitching in the future months. Um, so we know already I didn't stitch on Hummingbird, Hummingbird Pixie, so she's got a sad face. And then... Um, that's a happy face. That's a very happy face. Uh, so I didn't manage to start and finish the polar bear. So yes, so I at, at least achieved two goals, um, you know, full two goals. So so that's still something. <laughs> you have to, you know, at least embrace the wins, right? <laughs> okay. So finally, what do I think about doing in March? And again, March, I want to be, take it a little bit easy. So these are very kind of, um, you know, I know they may not all happen. And um, some of them, I've just transferred them from February with hope that this time I will manage to achieve these goals. Um, but basically, I'm not going to be very strict on myself with the stitchy goals in March. That's the bottom line. So first of all, stitch the next house as a bird house cell. So that's definitely a goal. 
then finish finally finish the fairy tales live on the roofs because you know that's also an outstanding goal from february um i want to keep stitching on dragon projects for the year of the dragon style so i'll definitely want to do at least a little bit of dragon stitching in march uh, hopefully some stitching on my easter dragon uh, because it's this time of the year where you know i should be stitching on easter things um Stitch, so yeah, as I said before, stitch more on owls, so hopefully pick pick my wisdom and get some more stitches in the wisdom uh, project, but also maybe stitch on a small owl ornament. Let's see how that goes. Uh, and yes, I would love to finally stitch on the humm hummingbird pixie so that she doesn't feel completely abandoned and so that I can actually get closer to finishing her this year. And yes, in general, I know this is kind of overlapping with the wisdom, but I would like to stitch more on a full coverage project. I kind of kept it a full coverage because maybe it will be the aquarium, maybe it will be a different full coverage, you know, it, maybe it will be something I've already stitched on, like my existing whip, or maybe, maybe I'll pick something new, I don't know, but I would like to actually do some proper stitching on the full coverage project, whichever project that is. So I left it kind of vague. Uh, to give myself some room but i would like to as i said i'm getting jealous of all these people stitching on full coverage projects and i'd like to do some more of, on that uh, so let's see how that goes and yeah not one goal which is not cross stitch related but i would like to find time to do other crafts in march so that's why i know that some of these goals i may not be able to meet or i will just only touch on them um, but I would like to also, you know, give myself some time for other things as well as cross stitch in the month of March. Okay, so I think that's it really. One thing that I forgot to mention earlier is that last month I announced a giveaway winner. And unfortunately, the winner has not contacted me still. Uh, so um, I will actually put the name of the winner here on the screen as well. Uh, but could you please, please, please contact me um, if you've won the, the giveaway from um, the Christmas star, so from my Christmas video, um, please drop me an email with your address so that I can send you the star. And if I don't hear from you by the end of March, then I will have to draw another winner. So, um, yeah, yeah, just please contact me before then. Okay. Uh, so I think that's everything now. So thank you so much for watching. And um, yeah, I hope to see you in my uh, next video. You know, have a lovely, lovely, lovely month. Um, you know, if I don't post before the end of March, um, enjoy your March. Um, I wish you lots of beautiful stitchy projects. Um, yeah, and, and just a great month in general. And thank you so much for visiting me today. And I hope to see you in my next video. Okay, bye-bye.